I would guess that a, a, a practical person give, gets extra credit for maybe not being the uh, sharpest bulb in the uh, uh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm reading numbers while talking. That's a bad, <laughs> bad idea. The smartest bulb in whatever. <laughs> <laughs> My brain was gonna go fifty percent, but no, that's you should stop stop talking. Yeah. Well, I, I'm I'm a fan of combining uh, sayings, and I, I always tend to use "he's not the sharpest spoon in the drawer," but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> It conveys a message. Yeah. Sharpened spoons. That sounds like prison prison shank <laughs> territory. Exactly. It's just a spork, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, that depends on how you sharpen it, I guess. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Could be, could be. But then again, a spork is very much utilitarian. I mean, it's practical. It saves weight. And so, yeah, that's... I mean, that's a compliment, isn't it? Bloody is it that sport. practical, though? You can't use it for is soup, it... can you? It's a tool that's only good for camping. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that sums it up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, most, most of the tools for camping is for camping only, and they have a very specific purpose but if they are i mean a spork it isn't a good fork or a spoon but i mean that's the essence of camping isn't it going somewhere and being slightly inconvenienced in every possible way <laughs> in addition to being cold freezing and miserable and then you go home and you appreciate life more yeah but you know nature <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> good for your soul <laughs> apparently <laughs> you're the one who works in it all day long you should know yeah I literally when I, I, I try and stay indoors for the rest of the time <laughs> <I work. laughs> Michelle's like come on sit outside with me let's have a drink no no I want to be in I've had enough sunshine today that's enough for that <laughs> yeah if you can stick your sunset up your arse I'm going to sit inside and watch Corey <laughs> yeah, that's <right. laughs> So I think, John, you can uh, intro away whenever you like. Yeah. Oh, fucking no pressure, boys. Eh? Thanks very much. We've built you up, <laughs> haven't we, this week? <laughs> yeah, I absolutely have thrown me under the bus with this one, haven't you? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate it. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to uh, jump into the deep end and swim. <laughs> so I see. I said, because I'm away, right, I, I never really listen to the podcasts when I'm away and I build up a bit of stock and when I come back, I listen to them going to and from work and stuff. But I thought, yeah, listen, this is my first time as a grown-up being on a proper podcast, not that bad audio nonsense. I better, uh, <laughs> I better, I better listen to what these guys have been saying last week. So I listened in, all casual, thinking I'll just make sure I know what they've been up to this last week. And then, and then I heard that. Just a big long spiel about how good the intros have been. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> but to, to be fair, though, you had us at proper podcast. I mean, in, whatever you do from here on out, you can't fail. <laughs> 53 episodes, boys. 53 episodes. He made it past yeah. eight, right? Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Right. Come on, then. Listen, I'm going to pretend I'm not reading my notes off my phone. Right. Don't tell anybody, right? <laughs> Right, so, all right, hello and welcome to episode number 53, the number one Crude Mistakes podcast, the birthday hangover episode. With your hosts, first <laughs> off, we have the man who used to work in engineering, and judging by the pronunciation of his co-host and listeners' names, had a very short-lived career as a cunning linguist, and now turns <laughs> pawns funny colours for a living. As a maker, he'll try anything, but look to be specialising in musical instruments before hitting that certain age and is now lost to the world of wood turning. It's Glenn <laughs> from Number One Projects. Alongside Glenn is the man who loves a grinder. Not that kind of grinder. He's tall, dark and handsome, but with a tash that makes him look like a Nordic noir Netflix baddie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and... He'll have a tough time explaining all the weapons that pepper his Instagram history from knives, axes, balls and chains, and even a carving knife with integrated lighting for extra accuracy. It's KJ from Crude But Efficient. And finally, 
the mad professor himself. The man who makes <laughs> things that nobody else even thinks of from petrol powered kitchen implements, hell corridors, and for some reason, giant paddle cart, and everything in between. Whatever the fuck sits in between those things. <laughs> nobody outside Scandinavia has any idea what his name is. Is it Henry? Is it Harry? He's the Kaiser Sozi of the maker world. The greatest trick <laughs> the devil ever pulled was convincing the world his name was Howard. It's Ovar <laughs> from behind the mistakes. And also this week, me. I'm John. <laughs> oh, oh, brilliant. Right. That was a novella. <laughs> right. I lost like that the Kaiser <laughs> Right, KJ, press record now so we can do it properly. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was... That was amazing. Uh. <laughs> so how's everybody doing? All well? All well. <laughs> All well indeed. All well. Fantastic. How do you answer that question when you're on a four-way screen? <laughs> Just whoever gets there first, John. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good, good, yeah. good, 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 mate. Good, good. Yeah. How are you? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, busy day. Busy day at work today. Oh. Feel like I've walked at least ten miles because I probably yep. did <laughs> most of it behind a lawnmower. So yeah, good effort. Nice. You still uh, yeah. push lawnmowers? Have you not got the ROV driven remote controlled ones in twenty twenty four? That'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? <laughs> I would really like that. <laughs> it would be cheaper for people to buy a robotic lawnmower than to hire me to do it. For <laughs> Shh, don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the reason, though. I mean, if I paid a gardener to do something and he just came, pulled up a lawn chair, cracked a bottle and just sit, <laughs> sat there with a remote control, I'd be I'm not sure I want to pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd be a bit annoyed, wouldn't you? Yeah, then it's actually a lawnmower salesman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then again, as a maker, he could make three or four mannequins off himself so he could just mount those on <laughs> the goes. automated uh, so then he could do several lawns full time parallel the man who <laughs> thinks of nobody <laughs> the man who thinks of the things that nobody else thinks <laughs> <Yeah>. of <laughs> well the, the question was, was whatever fucks in between <laughs> <laughs> a petrol powered lawnmower mannequin <laughs> Yeah. I really like this idea. Do it, hourly, do it. The hourly rate's going up, isn't it? Nicely here. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah. So, how are you guys? Well, it's uh, it's the birthday hangover. It's, it's been, the uh, birthday hangover. Yeah, it? it feels like it actually. Yeah. Well, it's it's on on the rebound. Can one say that? Um, of course, I've been home alone with the oldest kid for yeah a small week uh, and of course uh, we spent the week uh, doing everything we wanted to do and we had a night in Oslo uh, sleeping at a hotel going to a theater eating whatever whenever so yeah we've had, had a blast but uh, it, it is nice to have the the second half uh, of the family back again and getting to the the normal pace so yeah today has been like a, a sobering moment walking back to work and realizing all right got to act adult again <laughs> that sounds like no more cake in bed <laughs> i said act <laughs> <laughs> it always sounds funny when you put adult in the in front of any sentence doesn't it <laughs> yeah yeah it can change the meaning quite yeah my uh, my daughter does uh, tap dancing and ballet, and they also do adult tap and adult ballet and adult dancing. <laughs> it all just sound, just a different kettle of fish altogether. Carry Isn't on, that... Glenn. Keep talking, mate. Keep talking, please. <laughs> Tell us more about adult tap dancing. <laughs> <laughs> do you need a little fuel for that hotel room on your own, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the Irish thing? <laughs> Adult tap dancing, the the river dance or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> might be, might be. Ah, you've just lost your four Irish listeners. 
I thought we only had two. Sorry, Kev, mate. Sorry, Kev. <laughs> KJ, what have you been up to? Uh, not uh, super much, I feel like. Uh, my, my head is currently uh, been filled with... Well, uh, yesterday, when I was uh, having home office, uh, sitting in a meeting, all of a sudden, the background hum went quiet. And I realized that the, the heat pump had turned off because it blown a fuse so uh, and I tried to turn it back on and it wouldn't start or it started but then gave an error message so we didn't have any heating for like uh, yeah since yesterday but uh, but luckily there was a repairman coming around and fixing it uh, today so I feel like my 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 head was a bit Oh God! No, no heat. What are we gonna do? How how expensive is this gonna be? Yeah, thinking, but yeah, apparently it was a, a valve that uh, started leaking and pushing water into the motor that was controlling that valve, and apparently that's not good. <laughs> so, uh, are you at the stage already where you need heating? I like to have warm water all year round. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you just meant general heating for the house. Oh yeah, that's that's well. I mean, we had. I think we woke up to like seven degrees or something like that. Yeah, this morning. So it's it's getting there, but not. It's not that bad yet. Yeah, it's been similar here, to be honest with you. But bloody hot in the daytime still. We've yeah, been that's... in the early twenties today. That's the problem, though. You leave the heat on because it's nice when it's comfy in the morning, and you get up and I really come home in the afternoon of course the residual heat and the low the low shining sun so you you come home to a sauna <laughs> yeah then you need some intelligence staring that i think <laughs> no, that's, that's too much too much yeah oh we no don't, we don't oh, we no. don't do intelligence <laughs> I, i'm sure you can overcomplicate that as well <laughs> yeah <laughs> We like to keep it simple, but that being said, winter is coming, and we did fire up the the wood burning stove for the first time on this side of the summer. And yeah, so it smelled a bit burned, uh, dust, and so on. And of course, uh, in the nick of time, I remembered to remove the house plant that's been living on top of the oven for the last half year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Was it uh, filled with Lego bricks and uh, dolls and that sort of things as well? To be fair, I didn't check because... Um, <laughs> Burnt plastics, I think, <laughs> adding to the smell. I, I don't even stop if I hear sounds in the vacuum cleaner. I mean, we are so tired of clutter, and yes, <laughs> we bought the to them, but yeah, like, all right, whatever that was, we're not going to miss it. <laughs> <laughs> it's only ever something plastic, isn't it? It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. If it isn't... It, if it's in a workshop, that would be a completely other deal. That's, oh, that's probably the one screw I need for that one thing. So then I would end up dissecting the entire bag. Do you hoover your workshop? Uh, yes. Well, not in the hoovering, hoovering sense of the word. I mean, I do have like the, the portable vacuum. So if I do some messy work, I use it to pick it up. But no, I don't hoover it like you would your living room. It's not... Uh, it's not that kind of a workshop. <laughs> That's a specialist kind of video with that one, isn't it? No. <laughs> I, I hoover mine. Do I you do really? Well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Only about three or four times a week. But <laughs> <laughs> More often than the rest of, than the rest of the house, definitely. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how do you clean your workshop? I don't know. Uh, how do I clean? I don't know. I've, uh, I shook up the worst of the mess, and then about once every three months, I'll blow it out with a leaf blower at the garage door. Yeah, that's good fun, isn't it? That. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I can't you can't really breathe in there for about three days afterwards, but it <laughs> kind of works. I can't really do that because I have a a public road just outside, so I would pepper cars and uh, people walking the dogs and that sort of thing with stones and everything I was blowing out so I don't think it would be appreciated that's but all right. I, I, yeah, I was going to say I don't worry about that <laughs> not me neither but I'm... you don't live here so I <laughs> 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 
But that that's the thing, though. I, I do that during the summer, and of course, I do a, a real like uh, final blow uh, at the end of the summer because in the winter time, if I'm going to open up the garage door, it's it's going to be freezing. Um, but that got me thinking. I, I saw one of these pressurized air tanks that they use to instantly release air to like seat tires onto the rim in like tire shops and so on. And yeah. that got me thinking. I have an air inlet in the inner part of my workshop. So as long as you have that uh, availability of air coming in, should I just mount some some rail with some uh, nozzles up under the roof and just hook that up as a system? Then you just, because I have a small air compressor, so it, it runs out of puff very fast. But if I just install an accumulator tank and I pressure up that and it's just outside long string and you just open all at once and uh, you get instant clean workshop you could kind of when you've had a shower as well and if you don't want to use a towel to get dry you just go stand in your workshop and just do that couldn't you? <laughs> like a giant air blade yeah. dyson <laughs> <laughs> i like the way you're going with this <laughs> just just don't leave any uh, carpet knives on the table in front of you or something like that. Listen, I'm 43 years old. I don't know. I'm not sure my body would stand up to that jet, that jet of air <laughs> blasting. You might like it. Uh, listen, I might. I might. I don't know what damage it'll do though. You know what I mean, things are getting saggy enough. <laughs> you have to be careful which way you are turning though. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to the bits that are important. Unless you've had them snipped off recently, in which case, you know, <laughs> let it swing. <laughs> Going back to keeping your workshop tidy, John, I mean, you've got enough room just to sweep up a you know, a couple of tons in one corner. Your workshop's huge. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty lucky, I guess. I've got a detached double garage in the place that we moved into. Uh, um, uh, but unfortunately, I've got to use it as a garage as well as a... Oh, I know, right? Yeah. So, sad. I don't know, I'm working on a slow moving plan, uh, building a, a massive shed to move all my garage stuff in it to eventually uh, insulate the bit that I'm working on. Because I keep buying wood and moving it in there, and then three months later, it's unusable because <laughs> it's sucked in all of the moisture out of the air and all of that shenanigans. <laughs> but yeah, I have got some space to work with, to be fair. But yeah, it shares space with uh, you know the usual garden implements and bikes and yeah. all of those things. Actually, I had a motorbike up until a couple of years ago, and I sold that because it was annoying me because it kept getting in the way when I was uh, blowing out, <laughs> when I was blowing the sawdust out the door with a with a leaf blower, and uh, it was just yeah, the chain was getting choked up with sawdust, oily gunk nonsense. So <laughs> it feels like we've heard that story before. That. All of us had bikes at, at a point and then yeah. decided to know it's just in the way. <laughs> so, yeah, that needs to go. It's a young boy's game, I guess. Well, the sad tale about my motorbikes is I've had two motorbikes and I've been married twice and I've had to sell them both to pay for the honeymoon. So. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not getting a third bike, I hear. I'm not getting a third bike. <laughs> <laughs> then you know what happens. <laughs> Well, speaking of your making, John, what what kind of maker are you, really? What kind? Uh, I don't really know, to be honest with you. I think, uh, what do I make? I guess it's mainly woodworking. Uh, well, pretty much all woodworking, to be honest with you. I'm trying to build in a bit of leather inlay stuff, uh, brass inlay stuff, trying to get a little bit better at design and creativity. But, yeah, I think... Uh, I don't know, I'm electrical instrument by background, so my brain works in ones and zeros. I'm not the most creative human being in the world, so I like a process. I like following a set of instructions to you know to a point. So I'm trying to get away from that and be a bit more creative in what I'm building. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess it's just uh, therapy, really, more than anything else. You know, getting out and switching the brain off and getting a bit of space and getting into the zone. I don't know. What about you guys? How would you how would you class yourself? I keep, I keep finding this right. People ask me what I'm doing. I told people tonight that I was coming on a podcast. I'm like, what are you doing? What, are you, what kind of podcast are you going to? I don't know. Maker, woodworking <laughs> stuff. Like, I don't know how to describe it. How would you describe yourself? Yeah, that's really hard. I, I wish I 
I was more defined. So I could say I'm a woodworker or I'm a metal worker or a blacksmith or anything that's just defined. But I feel I'm not. That's why the maker brand works so well. But no one knows what a maker is. <laughs> so that really <laughs> not. I mean, if you say that you're a woodworker and you make tables or whatever, then people actually know what it is you're doing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I like to do most everything, anything I feel like, any material. That's exactly, yeah, that's and that's and that's where you lose them, right? <laughs> yes, that's yeah. Where you lose them. <laughs> that's yeah, the best way of ending a conversation. Is <laughs> okay, mm, okay, and just then Peter and out in an awkward either silence. Go, yeah, <laughs> either they change topic or they just walk away. So yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a yeah, it's a party trick. <laughs> Yeah, yeah the, maker, make, the maker label suits perfectly, doesn't it? I mean, it just, it's so general. But I, I feel like the maker thing's a, a new a new title that's come up for, instead of crafting, craft, you know, being a crafter. It's a bit American, sounds, isn't it? It's an American more, term, really, isn't it? Is it? Well, do you, I don't know. Do you not think? Yeah. I don't know. It feels a bit so American maybe. to me. American yeah. maker, I don't know. What's a, what's a European, British, Scandinavian version <laughs> we're just going to steal it. Surely we can come up with our own version of the word for maker. We should, at least. I yeah. think we should. But that's pro the... pro probably not on the spot right now, though. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> All right. One, two, three, go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but that's a question, though. I mean, of course, I, I feel that maker is very suitable. But, of course, nobody knows what it is uh, unless you are in the maker community. Um, if not, they're thinking it's some religious cult. Um, but I've been thinking, though, I call myself a maker, but at what point should I just switch and say, should I just say YouTuber? Because a lot of the people who ask, they, they, they know more what that is. And, of course, I I have made a couple of projects where it's like, all right, I, I want to make something that does this but I can't really get it to do it exactly that way. But I mean, on video, when I edit it, it looks like it works. And then I just, uh, <laughs> it sits on the shelf later. So the pro then the problem is, is it, is it the video that is the product or is it the product itself? And in some cases it's end up being the video. And of course, uh, if I say I'm a YouTuber, then, uh, of course people are like, Oh, do you do makeup tutorials, cat videos and, <laughs> Yeah, that's not the first, but the first question people ask when you tell them you're a YouTuber: How much do you get paid? <laughs> it's always the question. I get paid nothing, so why do you do it? <laughs> it's just why fun. do you do it? I don't know, actually. <laughs> <We're lice. laughs> yeah, well, um, I think we discussed it probably on the first or second episode that we did. And um, I've always been when I've made something, you know, if a neighbour was passing and I was made something, be, come and have a look at this, come and have a look at this. So I don't know, it's just a, it's just a will to share things for me, I think. That's yeah, a year down, it's a year down the line since that first episode, isn't it? You've had a few videos out since then. You still enjoy it as much as you did a year ago? You enjoy it more? I do. Um, it's a, it's a big high when you first get a video out and it gets likes and whatnot. And then when it doesn't get as many views as you'd hope for, it's a big low. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> it's still it is still enjoyable for me anyway at the moment. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I mean yes, we talked about it in the first or second episode and, and now we know each other better, so now we can start being honest and then <laughs> of course <laughs> it is it is very much still uh, the, the the look at me, you look at me and I, I think uh, at least KJ uh, have the same experience to me that we have at some point dabbed our toes into amateur theater and of course I I fell in love with being on the stage and, of course, doing something that makes someone laugh or applaud. That's, of course, great. So that's the likes. But also, like, hanging around with the people behind the scenes because that's where all the fun happens that no one else sees. And, of course, building everything and looking and getting to see how everything works. It's, so it's very transferable, I think, to the to the YouTube scene. I mean, it's, it's very much a community behind the scenes. And... It is the process of making something, and of course, once you've done it, you you really want people to see it. Yeah, and I mean, this goes back to that 
thing of when you start to explain what you do to a to a muggle, then they, they just turn around and walk away. But if you meet another maker, then they say, "Yeah, okay, what table saw do you have?" <laughs> that sort of thing, and it sparks a conversation. And this is I can show what I've done to anyone around the world, and the people are interested. Actually, watch it and comment. And I mean, I'm not I'm not trying to get fans. I want to meet my peers. I want yeah. to find all the other weirdos who like what I like. So yeah. It gives you that stuff. very specific information that it really reveals that you know stuff. And it's like you could be at an office party and someone is talking about and someone says, yeah, well, uh, I do knitting on my spare time. And oh, yeah, do you like to use the number sevens or the number nines? Mm-hmm. And they like instantly know. All right, this this guy is on to it. He he knows <laughs> more than he lets, he's letting in on. So yeah, it's done. You ever thought of doing any YouTube in John? No. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> recently you did a, a reel. Of, was it a side table that slotted at the side of your sofa? Yeah. And you 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 did edit that reel really nicely, actually. So I, I did wonder whether that was you were sort of transitioning this way. And I, I keep, uh, I, I don't, I don't really know what I'm doing to be honest with you. I, th- I started this off. I tell you what, right? So I started this off because I was, I went down a rabbit hole of YouTube and uh, during lockdown. Never listened to podcasts. Never watched YouTube. Only ever went on YouTube for you know how to fix a thing, and uh, I didn't even know that this whole world existed. Then got you know went down the rabbit hole and during lockdown because there was nothing else to do, right? And that kind of coincided with getting into the woodworking and, you know, slowly progressing skills and doing bits and pieces. And then uh, I started following a load of people and watching a load of stuff. And, uh, you know, it kind of inspires you, doesn't it? You know, you get loads of ideas. Yeah. There's loads of stuff that you want to try. You do bits and pieces. Uh, and then I thought, right, well, now I've made too many things and Sarah, my wife, she didn't really want them. <laughs> or, <laughs> or, uh, certainly didn't want all of them. So I thought, right, well, I'm going to have to either burn them or sell them. So I thought, well, I'll go and, I don't know, what do you do when you're selling stuff? I've got no idea. So you look on YouTube for that. So you go on Etsy and Facebook Marketplace, whatever. Put up an Etsy shop. Uh, and then I thought, well, you know, if you've got an Etsy shop, then I don't know, you're supposed to do social media, right? And this is after, uh, years ago, I kind of went cold turkey on social media because it just wasn't healthy for I didn't think it was healthy for me, certainly. I was working away at the time and spending all my time looking at social media. I thought, this is miserable, so killed it off. And then I was like an ex-smoker for a while, you know, preaching to everybody how terrible it was. <laughs> but then I went back on for the Instagram thinking, this is what you do, right? This is how you sell your stuff. And then uh, quickly found out nobody gave a shit whether you were on Instagram trying to sell stuff, but instead <laughs> found this weird and wonderful world of people doing the same kind of thing and start chatting with people and stuff. So that's kind of what I'm still trying to figure out really is, you know, what am I doing on here? And so I do bits and pieces on Instagram, basically do whatever I want. Yeah. None of it follows a thread, really. There's no real purpose behind it other than you know, I'll do whatever I fancy at the time and, and see what happens. But the thought of trying to make the lighting nice and trying to make the editing nice and trying to pick the right music and stuff just makes me think, nah, that's a step too far, I don't know. And I get why people <laughs> want to do it. I get why you do it. Yeah. And, you know, maybe I will at some point want to do it. But where I am now, I just, it, like, it feels like a step further than I want to go. I don't know. So I'm still trying to figure out what I'm doing here, really, to be honest. I've got no idea why I'm here on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, a good thing, though. There, there isn't any pressure. Uh, I mean, we, we discussed it here with some colleagues at work where the kids are now into that stage where they, they're they trying various kinds of activities to see if this is something for them. And, of course, the one thing that I'm reacting on, it, you, you aren't allowed to try very much uh, on different activities before they're like okay you got a free practice run one week and then you have to decide if this is something for you or not and you have to pay for the entire year and then of course they're doing soccer then and of course for a six-year-old i mean they might like it for three weeks and then it's like cold turkey and you've paid uh, three four hundred dollars for an entire year and now they're into dancing and then you try that and yeah but in the maker community there is nothing like we're all just six-year-olds. You can do. You can. Yeah, <laughs> basically. 
you can do whatever you want and there is no progress and there's no expectations then all right if, if you like to get into leather working then of course uh, all right then you have half a year and then you should be able to do this and this and that and you need that and that equipment i mean like you can do whatever you want in whatever pace you are and the community is still like there and discussing uh, back and forth so it's, it's really nice yeah and no one is surprised if you throw what you've been doing the last year out the window because your specific type of leather combination tells you to do something else fully yeah, yeah. and everybody's too nice to say how terrible it is and everybody's super nice and supportive <laughs> yeah. and encouraging so it's great <laughs> It's the best community to be to be a part of, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's a community of participation trophies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it seems like it's not that nice if you when people blow up and actually get the the normies in because then you get the the, the mean comments as well. And that doesn't, doesn't doesn't seem nice. Our little secure bubble is much is much nicer. I thought they are mean. Uh, comment on YouTube. I quite like them, to be honest with you. <laughs> What's your best one? Uh, Which one got to you? <laughs> not, not, none have got to me. I had a funny one the other day, and it was a uh, deaf guy complaining about the audio. <laughs> 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 no. I did think to myself, what does it matter if you're deaf? <laughs> But then again, that that should really burn. I mean, if a deaf guy is complaining about the audio, then, yeah, you, then you it's really should bad. should rethink a couple of things. Maybe you need to check the, the YouTube uh, automatic subtitles thing. Maybe it said shit music playing in the background or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's... oh, It's going to take a lot of time, and that's a fucking brilliant idea. I could... I could make my own, own auto-generated uh, text on my own videos. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> Shitty music playing. Yeah. <laughs> Out of tune humming. <laughs> make her size <laughs> excessively. <laughs> Measuring Awkward wrong pause. again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, I do get a few uh, technical questions on the instrument build as well, which I actually just don't understand because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> How do you tune this and wipe the octave and all these sorts of weird questions? Like, I don't know. <laughs> no idea. I make them, I give them to Steve, he makes them work. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. You should just answer. You, you don't ask the artist how he makes art. He just do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll bear that in mind for next time. <laughs> so, John, you're also on the. You're a co-host on the Bad Audio podcast. I am. I auditioned, yeah. and uh, the Grand Master uh, let me in for some reason. <laughs> I think it was a diversity inclusion thing where a Scotsman got in, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> what made you audition? Uh, just the uh, whiskey. Uh, no, I was sober. It was a. Uh, it was this whole uh, pushing myself out my comfort zone and yeah, you know, following my nose. Got you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Look where I am now. <laughs> Hi, mum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to go on the podcast once. That's why I started one. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It seemed it seemed like good crack. And uh, I thought, well, you know, push myself in my comfort zone, send a message to Glenn, see what happens, and there you go. We're on a podcast. <laughs> it's very brave of you because I, when we did the audition thing, I, I told told everybody that their auditions are going to get played online, which we didn't do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think that put a few people off. But no, I think you did really well. That's good. I was I was pleased that you waded through the hundreds of applicants and eventually picked uh, <laughs> oh, me and Andy, right? <laughs> Yeah, millions of them. <laughs> We're glad to have you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> then that brings the questions over to origin stories then, because there seems to be a, a common thread here, because, I mean, it's all just about sending a message to Glenn, and then, I mean, <laughs> voila, it's a podcast. <laughs> just, yeah. It certainly was for me. It's like... <laughs> 
So be careful when communicating with Glenn. You might end up starting a podcast. I've told, <laughs> I've told loads of people they should start a podcast, including you, John, actually. That's right. Yeah, you did, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Should start a podcast. I should. Yeah. Maybe he's right. It's because I, I keep running out of content when I'm at work. <laughs> so I think everyone should have a podcast. Yeah. I, thought, I, thought, I thought it was special. <laughs> you are special. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. I worked it on that one. But what, you were saying about origin stories? You guys hinted at your origin story in your uh, last birthday episode, didn't you? And then gave absolutely nothing away. So how's this going to work? Is this is this going to be a big standalone origin story episode? Or are you going to drip feed it in and, you know, tease your way through? Or how are you going to do this? I mean, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be Cloak and Daggers. <laughs> I mean, uh, follow along for the next hundred episodes. And you might, <laughs> might have enough piece to piece together or something. <laughs> well, I think I think there's a few different versions, aren't there? Of the origin story, we've Probably. come up with a few so far, haven't we? It's at least at least three, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it just depends whether you want the real one or not. Who, 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 who did you message to get involved, Glenn? <laughs> KJ messaged me actually. Oh, yeah, well, you're got... you're the one who said that we should actually do it. This is very true. But um, KJ started the conversation and basically sent me a message one day, a very long-winded message, saying that he was lonely and he wanted somebody to talk to. He'd been self-harming. <laughs> <laughs> Alcohol was uh, paying a big part in his life. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I need to talk to this guy and try and help him out. This poor Scandinavian guy. So I uh, you know, messaged uh... him and we had a couple of chats. Yeah, it's basically a helping someone off the ledge kind of situation. And uh, what what really puzzled me was, uh, I mean, a, th- a third wonky wheel on any cart is just a, a nuisance. So, so why I got a message out of the blue, uh, that still baffles me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we felt lonely out on that edge. Yeah. Le- Glenn more or less sat down beside me instead. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. He, he dragged me over to his side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. KJ quickly bad. realized he was getting no support and just abuse and thought he would need somebody yeah. else to help him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so then, of course, the, the natural choice is to get a, a slightly a neurotic, depressive uh, redhead from Norway to <laughs> come assist, yeah. yeah. He should be easy to bully. <laughs> Glenn will focus on him. <laughs> or he has been bullied a lot, so he got tough skin. <laughs> no, <That> he doesn't. <laughs> yeah. No, we, we decided we needed a third person because you know conversation can be run a little bit dry between two. And so we messaged um I think it was about fifty odd people. <laughs> and uh <laughs> Eventually, Havar got back to us. The only athlete. One of them, one of them replied. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, mate. Yeah. I, was, I, I was actually um, watching Havar on YouTube before the podcast or any discussion of a podcast or anything and was subscribed to him. And um, we had Did a few he comment messages. though? No. Is it like I co- did. Co- creeping, l- lurking in I the bushes. Co- I commented on your videos. That was crap. What's all that about? <laughs> <laughs> Talking about mean comments, yeah. yeah. So that's just, oh yeah, okay, the, the bullying into seeking acceptance and then accepting the podcast. All right, the, the plot thickens. <laughs> well, I, I didn't even know that horror existed, so I guess that's a thing I have to t- thank, thank Glenn you. for, <laughs> <laughs> for introducing me. Should I uh, should I just dial out here and leave you guys do this? I don't know what's the other one started here. <laughs> the last You're episode. The, one who on... it. <laughs> yeah. the hangover episode. Yeah, that's where it all ended. <laughs> you were quite accepting, actually. I sent you a I sent you a message. You were the, the main person we sent a message to, other than you know just a few others, but. Um... <laughs> You you got back pretty much straight away and said, "Yeah, let's have a chat." <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have no life and uh... <laughs> <laughs> no. It's uh, I'm very much uh, on the page of like, all right, uh, uh, 
you should try and expand your comfort zone and this was very much one of those oh yeah, yeah. but so the first episode we ever recorded that was literally the second time we'd spoken so far in uh, face to face wasn't it me and kj yeah. spoke twice before that i think yeah i think so yeah because that first conversation we should have recorded that for really shouldn't we yeah we should <laughs> i mean that so <laughs> How do you set up a podcast, guys? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it went through Can't be that hard, reams. can it? Must be pretty easy, right? <laughs> Lots it's, of people do. It'll be fine. But that's the thing, though. I mean, we had a that should be episode minus one then, because for the for the birthday reel, I, I tried to do some stats, and it, it it's quite the the maths exercise. I mean, it's a. <laughs> We started with episode zero, which was the dress <laughs> rehearsal, and then we started on one. And then at some point, we started with half pints. Uh, and of course, uh, we don't follow seasons like anyone else. <laughs> so yeah. I had to, all right, episodes minus one plus zero. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, yes, half pints minus six. And then, yeah, five. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, here Sounds we like you need a spreadsheet. Yeah. yeah. I think if you, if you go by just uploaded MP3s, this this one that we're listening to, or we are talking to, someone is listening to it, hopefully, is uh, number 100 in just files. But that not, that's not what it's numbered. So, yeah. That didn't feel as good as I thought it would. <laughs> <laughs> it took you by surprise. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't mentally prepared for that. So, oh. That's a hangover episode and you're going to have to get back on the sauce again now. <laughs> it takes a couple to get back in there, doesn't it? Well, but yeah, um, getting back into it, I um, I got an idea for a project today uh, and that's the first thing I'm going to do once we uh, hang up on this podcast. I'm going to order some parts. I'm going to make The Void. Um not the social media that we talked about on an earlier episode, but I'm gonna make oh, a, yeah. I'm gonna make an office screen box. <laughs> I, I got that idea during a meeting today, and I, I, start, I started googling it. And this is very much a thing, so it's not gonna be like anything new about this. So it's about me adding an extra touch. But of course, uh, the original concept is if you're frustrated enough at work, you can scream into the box. So it's a, basically a box with a hole in it and it's like sound insulated on the inside. But I thought if I also mount a microphone and I have an Arduino, I just need that MP3 voice box that I used for another project to, to then output like these uh, standard cliche office sayings uh, <laughs> or auto replies to emails or something. So every time you just scream into it, it just answers some bullshit reply for you. So that's uh, that's going to be my <laughs> next project. And I got really inspired to that. <laughs> nice. nice. As somebody who doesn't work in an office, what, what is a standard office reply? Synergies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's uh, let's smoke out the problems here and uh, no, come up with some solutions. Let, let's look for synergies. Let's do <laughs> double back. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, I'm so glad I don't work in an office. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Me too. It is depressing, <laughs> but of course, I I have now understand why my parents' generation laughed at the Dilbert comic. I mean, that was it. I, I was just reading it as a kid, and I. This is the dumbest thing I ever had. And then <laughs> here the other day, I just uh, waiting for a coffee cup to be filled. And it was like a Dilbert calendar on a table. And I started flipping through it. Oh, no. This makes sense now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little snapshot on how depressed your parents' generation really were. <laughs> All of that yeah. resonated with them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm so happy for home office. Otherwise, I don't know what I would do. So then, but you're traveling uh, a lot, aren't you, John? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm, mo I'm mostly sort of home and office round about home, but but I've you have worked. to go go ab go away at times. I do. Yeah, I'm away now. I'm down in Dubai just now, and uh, yeah, I've worked 
foreign with Norwegian companies since 2008, I think. So I've been back and forth to Norway a lot, but uh, you know, most of my time I'm home or working from home. So round about Aberdeen in Scotland. So I stay about half an hour west of Aberdeen up in up in Scotland is where home is for me. But uh, yeah, I travel a little bit for work, yeah. So I get withdrawal symptoms now. I'm away from home for about three weeks this time, so three cramming weeks. as yeah, yeah, yeah. So I cram in as much making as I can before I come in and come away, and I've got withdrawals from my garage. And <laughs> Don't I miss you have my any tools. small projects? I miss my tools. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you have anything that you can take with you? I don't know. Well, I take I, I try and take away bits and pieces. I try and come away with ideas of stuff to do. So, like, I took some. Uh, what did I make? I made uh, just some coasters and some tea light holders and uh, some clocks. That I finished up before I came away this time. So I took the photos and stuff, and then I fired them onto the laptop when I came away. So I will throw them in a light burn and edit the photos and do some bits and pieces to entertain myself and maybe try and come up with some ideas and do some of the design stuff when I'm away, when I get time, just to try and, you know, itch that, you know, scratch that itch of creativity while I'm away. But yeah, <laughs> I do, I do, I miss my tools when I'm away. Maybe that, you that's a nice a YouTuber. You could edit, couldn't you, when you were away then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that, that's a good segue, though. I mean, what's the what's the itch that needs to be scratched when you get home? What's your next project? <laughs> what's my next project? I need to finish off all the stuff that's lying about my garage that's not finished. Is, is the point? <laughs> You're at that stage. Yeah, but yeah. you need you need to start a new one, aren't you? Because there is uh, the Turgworks uh, challenge is setting up, and I mean, you can't really finish a project, can't you? You need to start something from scratch, and I see from the other podcast that people are starting to position themselves, getting material and uh, greasing yeah. up and uh, bribing the, the host. And uh, I see yeah. that, yeah. <laughs> the old, uh, old Scrapwood Challenge with Tim from Turworks. Yeah, I saw some of that chat the last couple of days, people talking about, you know, what's Scrapwood? You know, if you've got a brand new live edge slab from an ash tree <laughs> that's fallen down 16 foot long and four foot <laughs> wide and three inches thick, Technically, it would have been fire, but oh, come on, guys, come on, come on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I've got zero ideas for that. You know, like I said, you know, I think in ones and zeros, I'm not very creative. So I'll basically wait and see what you guys do and come up with a variation, I think, is the, is the plan. <laughs> <laughs> a musical Im illuminated light that got an amplifier built into it as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shouts insults when you when you shout yeah. in there. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Scrap with challenge. I do. I need to think of something. I've got a load of. I've got. A load, I don't know. I guess everybody does, right? I've got a load of scrap bits and pieces and bits of scrap sheet wood stuff and I don't know bits and pieces lying everywhere that I should do something with and have been saving for some kind of scrap wood challenge, just waiting for an idea to come along. But you know. Yeah. I need that idea. I need that flash inspiration. There's been some absolute belters of winners. You know what I mean? It's getting a bit intimidating, really. That challenge, isn't it? There's been some. There's been some I good projects the last couple of years, hasn't there? It's all tables, though, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Eh? That's true. You have, yeah. you have to build a table. I have table to think or a cupboard. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Need uh, a table. Maybe it's something that's gonna. <laughs> it's gonna be something that comes in uh, sideways this time. That's gonna blow the tables <laughs> out of the water. Petal powered table with a I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's the thing though. I I haven't taken it seriously because I mean this is the first year where they also accept international uh, participants and the previous year I, I've just been well you can say what you want I'm participating anyway and then of course I mean <laughs> as you by default is excluded I mean doesn't matter what you do so I've just been taking a piss out of everything but now you can actually join join and then like shit shit do i do i, do I still just <laughs> piss off and do something weird on the side or do i actually try to make something decent here but i mean I, i'm already i think with the last project that is ongoing now which is a table then i built three tables this year so I, I'm, I'm really not sure if i want to make a fourth one just to be eligible for uh the competition 
or a prize. I mean, everybody can <laughs> apply, of course. I'm still astounded you didn't win last year with that uh, cheese slicer handle. I mean, that was just artwork, wasn't it? Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's that's a good definition. That was basically art. I mean, it's it's the it's the Mona Lisa of cheese graters. So, yeah, that's, uh... but it, it got stolen three times. <laughs> <laughs> it looks at you whenever you're in the kitchen. <laughs> seductive smile is she smiling <laughs> is she not <laughs> I had a, a great big slab of chestnut dropped off in the workshop last night very nice <laughs> yeah, is this very your very worktop nice. this is um, an actual um, a vanity well, I'm going to call it a commission because it's a, a job for a friend <laughs> yeah they, they're going to they're, they are going to use it as a vanity um, thing with two sinks on top I've just got to put a couple of holes in it for the plug holes, obviously, and um, sand it, put a lot of epoxy into it, and uh, slap some finish on it. Hopefully that, and then get it out the back out of the workshop because it's huge. <laughs> <laughs> does uh, does that word get bleeped out automatically in the podcast, or do you need to go back in and and do that if somebody says the e word? <laughs> uh, epoxy <laughs> got delivered today <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was gonna i was gonna post it on instagram just to see if i get any reaction <laughs> yeah. i mean and it's you... it's one occurrence every episode is acceptable but if, if it detects river in any context uh during the episode as well then it, you're banned for three episodes <laughs> <laughs> i mean we've all dabbled with epoxy before haven't we we've yeah. all we all experimented in our early years. <laughs> yeah, Only as yes. a glue. You learn, you learn to live with the shame, but you know we've all been there. Yeah. I mean, I'm far it, too cheap for for epoxy. It's too expensive for me. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, epoxy is it's still not acceptable, but I mean, the the price wise and what I could get my hands on at an early age, it was uh, a lot of polyester. And fiberglass, <laughs> yeah. and polyester. That's that's a totally different division of of smell. And I mean, it's if someone great, opens a can in the same warehouse as I am, I get instant headache because that smell is terrible. And yeah, it's not good for you. So uh, yeah, it's awful, isn't it? I had a number one crude mistake with uh, fiberglass a few years ago. I wanted to make a bait boat for fishing, a radio controlled boat, and I thought, oh, I'll just make my own hull. And so I, I thought I need to make a mold. So I got some polystyrene and made the mold polystyrene, not realizing that the uh, fiberglass mixture just melts it instantly. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm... Thirty quid of fiberglass just all over the table. <laughs> <laughs> Did it float? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, just chucked it straight in the bin, John. I never tested it. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the same club. I experienced that, and I had to make a, a new plug, and then I just coated it with aluminum foil, which is very good, and it really releases the fiberglass good. But uh, if you're going to do complex shapes, that's a pain in the ass. But, yeah, polystyrene really gets uh, <laughs> dissolved by the polyester. Have you turned resin yet on your lathe, Glenn? I haven't, but I want to just because it looks spectacular. It's like string coming off, doesn't it? It does. That's how I got suckered in as well. But what a <laughs> bastard it is to clean up. <laughs> really? <laughs> it, it comes off super staticky, so it sticks to you. You can't even like brush it off yourself. It just sticks to you like a <laughs> face hugger oh, yeah. mask of plastic horror. And you can't. You can't clean it up, and then it gets sucked into dust bags or everything else. So you can't, you know, you can't just dump sawdust either because there's plastic all through it. Oh man, it's horrible. Okay, Glenn, you do that, and I would like you to make a video where you take the chuck of the lathe, of course, and you hang it on by a string in a bucket, and you fill the polyester and the hardener in, so it just solidifies around the chuck. You mount it back on, and <laughs> you start lathing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So of course, yeah. Then Glenn, of course, you're gonna enter the competition with anything lathe. Uh, I'm guessing. So then KJ. No. How about you? 
<laughs> I have zero ideas uh, that could be forced into scrap wood uh, territory. I think none that comes to mind. So maybe something in the last minute, but at the moment, I got nothing. I am struggling to get the idea that we spoke about a few weeks ago of a gun out of my head. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to make a gun because I think it'd be irresponsible. I don't like the fact that I've got a, uh, I made a rifle stock on my YouTube and it's still watched a lot by Russians. And I don't <laughs> so I Sorry, don't Ukraine. Gun, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no. It's probably saving them, to be honest with you, but if it's one of my projects. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why the Russians are doing so badly. It's not yeah. using why? your gun stuff. So <laughs> why are they running about, <laughs> running about with musical rifles? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what their subtitles say. Yeah. Russian man with shit music rifle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I've, uh, I've been trying to come up with a friendlier version of a gun. In my mind, I think I've got something, but I don't know whether it'll be the scrapbook challenge. Uh, Matt, Matt Esley did one uh, not that long ago, didn't he? Try, try and make a pistol, a wooden pistol that nearly worked, but didn't quite. Oh, okay. Hmm. What did he shoot? Well, nothing, because it didn't really work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, was, was it intended to shoot real bullets, or...? Uh, I can't remember. It was age. Uh, well, I don't know. Was it six months ago or a year ago or something? Maybe I don't. I remember the video being really dramatic and thinking, "Oh, he's going to make a gun out of it. This is going to yeah. be ace." And then the grand finale was, "Ah, oh, fuck! It didn't quite work." <laughs> so, I don't know, I'm assuming there's going to be a follow-up video at some point, unless you sneak in there with a scrap wood challenge and blow him at the water. I'm definitely on that now. Then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you've got you've got plans that nearly work to start with. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he put a lot he put a lot of work in it. To be fair, uh, it did uh, it did nearly work for memory, but I don't think he was too happy with it in the end. I mean, nearly working for a gun that's not really a good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that could end badly. <laughs> yeah, and then, then again, I mean, I I think I could pull off a, a wooden gun, but it would be like a one shooter. Well, not only just a one shooter, but also a, a, a one time shooter. So, <laughs> and of course, then I would have forgotten to turn the camera on or switch it off when it was on or something like that. So I would end up with no footage. <laughs> just before we come to the end of the main episode, we need to talk about the WhatsApp group. Yes. We've got a new member today. We new do. member, that sounds wrong, doesn't it? <laughs> it sounds like it is a sausage party, so yeah. Uh, sounds like an entry to the scrap of challenge. <laughs> Could be as well. <laughs> we had uh, Miguel from Miguel Makes join us today, which was nice. Yeah. He was the guy that originally came up with the crude and mistaken ones title, so it's good to have him aboard. I don't, I don't know what the traditional. Welcome is for people from Switzerland, though. Switzerland! <laughs> Switzerland! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's canon. I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> That note, we might end the episode so I can go and uh, Google uh, <laughs> Swiss stereotypes because I drew a blank. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it then? Is this what the awkward sound? Is this what the awkward sound? I won't say sound like on a podcast, does it? <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right, excellent. <laughs> we have to have one every episode. Was that the, was that the outro then, have our? Yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>